Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Hi, everybody. I'm Donnie Adair, subbing today for Bruce Broussard. Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, where we talk about issues that are important to the community. Today, we're going to talk about the 30th annual Keep Alive the Dream tribute to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. I've been a, uh, 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 it's been a pleasure for me to be a part of that over the 30 years of this tribute. And this year, it's going to be really special. Uh, we're going to be doing some tributes to some people that we've lost in our community and to the art community uh, and to the spiritual community. Namely, we're talking about the late great uh, pianist Janice Marie Scroggins. Um, we're going to be doing a special tribute also to the great songstress uh, that is Linda, was Linda Hornbuckle. And some of the musicians from the community and from the area are heading up this tribute, like, for instance, Norm Sylvester, the Boogie Cat, is going to head up the, the tribute to. Uh, Janice Scroggins. We're also bringing in from, uh, as a keynote speaker, a gentleman that some of you may have heard of. His name is Aaron Gandhi, and he is the fifth grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, who uh, led by disobedience, or civil disobedience, I should say, the uh, decolonization of India. And that gentleman's work is, uh, gave impetus to what Dr. Martin Luther King did in the way of bringing nonviolence as a way to bring attention to and overcoming the evils of segregation, Jim Crow, and uh, inequality in this country. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, this great day where Portlanders come together and they uh, pay tribute. We have a number of speakers. In fact, we have 53 different acts, including speakers, dramatic pieces, skits, uh, a number of local bands, professional. A lot of schools, as usual, will be participating. You know, we're going to have the drummers, the uh, Kukatonin. Uh, we're going to have Irvington School. We're going to have Buckman School. We're going to have Rosa Parks and the jazz band from Martin Luther King School, uh, where Academy, or pardon me, uh, Grammy Award winner, uh, Thera Memory, along with Kenny Polson, have put together a youth jazz band. It's just, just outstanding. Uh, by the way, we're hoping that you'll uh, take some of, uh, give us some calls during this first segment of the program uh, as I let you know what we're going to be doing, and hopefully that will come across the stream, screen, and if you can give us a call, maybe we'll take some calls and find out what you uh, do on Martin Luther King Day. But again, we're celebrating and talking about today the World Arts Foundation 30th Annual Tribute to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, it's going to be uh, back at Highland Christian Center, Northeast 76th and Gleason. As uh, some of you might know, of the last couple of years we've been out on Sandy at Ant Anthem Church, but we're, we're kind of back to one of our homes in the community with uh, Highland and uh, 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 Dr. W.G. Hardy Jr. and the flock out there have welcomed us back with open arms and we just look forward to to being in that, in that house and it's going to give us a special spirit for our tribute to Dr. King. We start at noon and uh, we will end at 6 p.m. this year. Uh, it's a long program but think of it as a festival so you might want to come out and enjoy uh, just a part of it. Uh, or, you know, if you got stamina, you can come out and stay as long as you like between noon and 6 p.m. Also, we will have our exhibits. We're calling it the Victory Village this year. We have 50 uh, booths and tables uh, there at the church, and uh, vendors are going to be selling their wares. There'll be informational booths, community information on jobs, on health, uh, both mental health and uh, 
uh, medical health, and there'll be other interesting information that might be of value to you. But in, in reality, it's just a great time for a lot of us to get together. And for some of us, it's almost like a New Year's celebration. We have been doing this thing for 30 years. It started uh, really longer than that. One of the local community radio stations, KBOOFM, uh, owned by the community, uh, exempted their programming for uh, a whole day on on this very special day. And this was even before there was a legal holiday. And what they did was invite members of the community to come in, artists from the community to come in, and to share either their art, whether that was their music, uh, vocal or instrumental, and, and or to come in and speak if you uh, had something important to share. And we also asked the community leaders to come in and just talk about Martha, Martin Luther King, his tribute, uh, his uh, contributions to uh, not only the country but the world and what the civil rights movement meant. So it's going to be a great day. So we'll be there Monday, January 19th at Highland Christian Center at 76 in Gleason. And we'll be there from noon until 6 p.m. Now, we're going to have some great choir singing. Uh, as usual, the Gospel Workshop of America, which brings together uh, some of the best singers from churches uh, and other choirs around the area each year. And they work together throughout the year and sing at various venues. And this is one of the ones that they uh, come to annually. So we'll have the Portland, Vancouver chapter of uh, Gospel Workshop of America. Uh, and they'll be uh, bringing their special brand of singing. I will also have Dr. Hardy, the host pastor, is going to bring uh, a, a little a message for us. And also uh, his youth adult choir from Highland uh, Christian Center is going to be singing as well. And they are... A really, really an exciting young choir uh, to hear. Um, some of the other dignitaries we're going to have, the Mayor Charlie Hales will be coming again this year, Commissioner Fish from the city, Commissioner Loretta Smith from the county will be back with us, and, and she's going to be reading a, a proclamation uh, regarding um, Lynn Hornbuckle, I believe, and uh, it's just going to be a wonderful affair. So uh, we invite you to come out to this 30th annual tribute to uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And to just kind of find out more about uh, what this day means in our community. We especially invite you to bring young people out with you. Uh, it's real interesting. This year we've added to our announcer team one of the members of our crew uh, Miracle Trice, who's from Grand High School, has been working with us about four or five years since she was in uh, middle school. But now she's going to be an announcer, one of the MCs on that uh, wonderful day on Monday, January 19th. And she's going to introduce uh, the superintendent of schools and some other uh, school uh, acts that are going to be with us, some of the choirs and some of the dancers, like the Jefferson Dancers, for example. Now, that's an award-winning program that always comes out and shares the talent of the senior-most dancers in the Jefferson uh, High School dance program. And the JDs, as they're called, are known throughout the country, and uh, they perform for many events, but they're going to be on our stage once again. We'll be looking for the Jefferson Dancers. That program has been going on for 39 years. And uh, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, Steve Gonzalez, the artistic director, was actually a member of that dance troupe in, at Jefferson. And he went off, had a professional career, and they were able to get him to come back and contribute his knowledge, his choreography over these many years. So it's a program that has grown some really wonderful talent in the Portland area to go on and do other great artistic things. Again, I want to mention uh, 
in the Victory Village this year, we are also going to, uh, I'm going to have a booth with my group, of course, African American Hunting. So there'll be some unusual things there for you to, to learn about in the community. If you want to get involved in the outdoors or learn more about things like land, uh, land, land and water conservation, uh, uh, there'll be booths there to uh, provide that information for you. Our program is produced by Executive Director Ken Berry, who's been doing this for over 30 years, and we hope that uh, he will be joining us later on in the program, in our second half of our program. And uh, it, it's just going to be a wonderful, wonderful program. We've broken the program down into three sections. In that first section, uh, the Bravo Music Program from Rosa Park Elementary School is going to be uh, performing at the outset. So if you want to see them, you want to get there right at the beginning of the program. And, and uh, this is a, a privately funded uh, program for student, students to learn music at uh, Rosa Parks Elementary School out, of, out in the New Columbia area in North Portland. And uh, it's just been a wonderful success. It's about two years old. And these students are going to be showing you uh, their talent and how they bloomed uh, and performing some, some wonderful music. It's one of the only privately funded music programs in a public school in Oregon. Uh, the Martin Luther King School Jazz Band is a newer youth group that has been uh, molded and put together by Grammy Award winner Thera Memory and Kenny Polson, who's been at uh, Cleveland and some other high schools in the past, but now he's over at Martin Luther King School uh, with a jazz band group that he's put together there. Uh, Dr. Hardy, Highly Christian Center in this first segment. Uh, we'll also be honoring uh, people as we normally do with our Lifetime Achievement Awards. Uh, Edward Peterson III is one of the people who's going to be honored. Leslie Unthank is also going to be honored. She's done some wonderful things over the years in our community. Uh, Senator, uh, retired Senator Gordley is also going to bring a greeting. Buckman School, Franklin High School, just some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, participants in this year's our 30th annual tribute to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, again, my name is Donnie Adair. I'm guest host for Mr. Bruce Broussard. Bruce, we hope you're, you'll get well soon and be right back in front of the camera. And this is Oregon Voters Digest, a program that brings issues of interest to the community. Later on in the afternoon in our program, as I mentioned before, we're going to have that uh, guest speaker, keynote speaker, Aaron Gandhi. And Aaron is a peace activist and has been for over 30 years. Uh, our theme uh, is an interesting one this year, and we are really celebrating <coughs> pardon me, the Voter Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act. And in 1965, the Voting Rights Act was acted, enacted by the Congress, and uh, it was one of the important, most important freedoms that we were able to uh, safeguard as a result of the Civil Rights Movement. And uh, there can be no more fundamental right other than the right to live than the right to vote and to participate in this country. What we're seeing is that people in this country are not taking advantage of that opportunity, particularly youth. So we're putting the spotlight on the Voting Rights Act, the first 50 years of the Voting Rights Act. And we're making an emphasis, particularly with young people, that you need to vote. I don't know how many young people I've met who have not been voting. More of them have gotten interested as we've had uh, newer candidates like Obama over the last 
two or three uh, uh, cycles or two or three major elections, four-year elections and so forth. But still, even in Oregon, one of the things that's great about um, voting by mail is that it makes it easy for everybody to vote. But one of the tough things about voting by mail is it's hard to get people energized about it. They don't have to go out. They don't have to pull that lever in a booth like we used to do or, or fill in the dots or whatever. Uh, it's something you can do in your own home and you can mail it out or you can take it out, et so, etc. So uh, this is an easy generation. It's an electronic generation. I don't know if we'll ever have uh, email voting, but, you know, it's something we, we need to perhaps think about if that's what the medium that people are using to conduct the, the very business of their lives right now. So, and even in the future, we don't know what it will bring. But we do know we have to get to the hearts of people and we have to get to their heads and we have to raise awareness about voting rights. So at the 30th annual tribute to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, sponsored by the World Arts Foundation, we are placing an emphasis on the Voting Rights Act and voting itself. So many of our speakers are going to be talking about the importance of voting and the importance of running for office and the importance of participating in government in a variety of ways, more so than what we're doing right now. So we're really looking forward to having people out. Now, on this very important day, there's a number of ways that you'll be engaged and that you can get the benefit of the program. Of course, we want you to come out and be there physically and be a presence. On this day, normally we have five to 7,000 people minimum who come out. We've had as many as 10,000 who come through from six, uh, or pardon me, noon to 6 p.m. to see the program live. And nothing is better than getting the program live. And that's what we want you to do. But it is being broadcast on cable uh, access, uh, Xfinity cable access, and also on the Portland Public Schools channel. So you'll be able to get it live and a delayed broadcast on cable television. And that's very, very important so that we can reach out and those who can't attend but that do have cable can get the program. In addition to that, KBOO-FM radio it will be broadcasting live from the event all day. They'll be starting probably, I think, about uh, 9 or 10 in the morning, and they'll be broadcasting live from uh, Highland Christian Center, Northeast 76 in Gleason, and beyond the 6 p.m. hour. So they'll be reaching out to people. And, of course, you can get KBOO via Internet, too. So now our program is international. So there's no excuse for you not being able to get it. We recognize that some people have to work. And so this is a way you can get it. Maybe if you're working, say if you own a restaurant or a small business and you're working, maybe you can put us on on KBU, uh radio on your sound system. and Because it would be a lot of good music and people will have a lot of good feelings about it. And it would probably make your atmosphere really nice. Uh, or if you're working in a hospital or something like that, we understand you got to work 24-7 or the, those organizations are providing services to our community 24-7. So you might even be in law enforcement or something where you're unable to come, but you might be able to get it via radio, via the great public access here uh, at Portland Community Media and uh, via Portland Public Schools Channel. So. Uh, again, what we're talking about, if you've just tuned in, is the 30th annual Keep Alive the Dream celebration of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, sponsored by World Arts Foundation Incorporated, right here in Portland. And it'll be held uh, six, uh, pardon me, noon to 6 p.m. on the holiday, January 19th, 2015. And this is, man, this is our 30th. You don't know what, is a, what a blessing it is just to be a part of this great program. Uh, I remember uh, Ken Berry, our executive director, came to me 
a little over 30 years ago and said, Donnie, we want you to MC this program. And I said, okay. Because uh, I'd done some gospel programs with him and so forth. We've known each other throughout our lives. and uh, uh, So he asked me to MC the program, to be the master of ceremonies. Okay. And I didn't know the program was going to be that long. And we started out, our first program was probably about four hours long. And man, I almost fell out after the program, all that standing up and so forth. And it even got a little bit longer. We've been as long as seven or eight hours running overtime. But we've gotten back down now to six hours. And people say, six hours, that's a long time. Yes, but it's a festival. It's bringing people in and giving people access to give us their spoken word or give us their vocal or instrumental talent and music. Uh, to raise awareness about King and civil rights and equality in our community and other important issues in our community that talk about the quality of life. So, you know, throughout this 30 years, we've been at different venues. We started at uh, Whitaker Middle School, which was the old Adam High School, right? That building doesn't even exist now. And then we were at Jefferson High School, for a number of years. Um, and Jefferson is a great venue as far as for artists and, and getting student involvement and all those kinds of things. A little problematic on it being an old building and access and some of those things. So we went out to the University of Portland with this uh, King tribute for a couple of years out to the Child Center, which is a very nice facility. But we ended up coming back home to Jefferson for several years. And then uh, we went to Highland for several years. And then uh, after being at Highland several years, we ended out at Anthem Church for a couple years, primarily because of the facility. It was kind of state of the art and those kinds of things. But, you know, facilities are not everything. Highland has, is a great facility as well, but it has a great atmosphere, you know a church atmosphere. One of the neat things about being in the church is that it recreates the atmosphere of the civil rights movement. Many of the gatherings prior to the marches where people were going to go out and be beaten or, you know, march with their signs and ended up being uh, beaten and, and harassed and all these kinds of things, They the church setting was where they... Uh, got their momentum, where they got their strength, and they came out of there ready to face anything in support of uh, civil rights and equality and, and opportunity uh, for all people, regardless of what your race is and those kinds of things. So, so we ended up back at Highland. That's where we're going to be this coming uh, Monday after next, January 19th, uh, 2015, for the 30th annual tribute to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. The address again for Highland Christian Center is 76, Northeast 76, and Gleason. So we want to see you there. We're coming up, we're going to have uh, our guests, and uh, they can even tell you more about it. They're just as excited or even more excited than I am. We're going to have, I think, Michael Grice, president of World Arts, and Ken Berry, executive director, and some other guests from the production team. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Hey everybody, we're back. I'm Donnie Adair for Oregon Voters Digest. And I'm subbing today for Bruce Broussard, and we're hoping Bruce gets well soon. He's a little bit under the weather. But my guest hey. is Mr. Ken Berry, Executive Director of Keep Alive the Dream over these many uh, 30 years. Ken, well, thank you, man. Man, for, thank, thank you for, for, coming for being in. here. And I'm going to apologize to the audience and Mr. Bruce Broussard because one of the things in, in multitasking, and Don, you know better than anybody else because you know me pretty well, mm -hmm. is that we kind of overbooked ourselves today. I was at... Uh, the memorial service for Geneva Knowles. I just yes. left that a moment ago. And what a remarkable turnout. I mean, the community, all the dignitaries are there. Loretta mm -hmm. Smith, um, um, Lou Frederick, just to name a few mm -hmm. of the folks. C yeah. City and county yeah. officials were all yeah. there. Yeah. I said, what an amazing showing of how she impacted the city. So mm -hmm. Bruce asked well, us. For, uh, let, yeah. me, let me just say this. For those of you who don't know uh, who Geneva Knowles was, Good. she and her husband, Paul Knowles, are two of the most important entrepreneurs that we've had in Northeast Portland. Uh, over a span of 40 or 50 years, they've had the Cotton Club. You remember that? Oh, yes. man, Geneva's? Uh, Geneva's, the, the place where friends meet on uh, Williams Avenue. Their current salon, Geneva's, uh, uh, has some of the finest cosmetology services. But they've been a beacon uh, to other entrepreneurs in the area. And, of course, Paul is known as, as the mayor of Northeast Portland. Albana. And uh, so uh, Geneva Knowles was a great person, a wonderful uh, hairstylist. And, and a barber. dresser. I mean, she set a standard for, yeah. for young women yes. in this town. I mean, yes. just an outstanding individual. Right. And so with her passing, the community's lost a lot. That's right. And I, if it's okay, I'd like to just showcase this is yeah. the... Uh, the obituary that was just uh, just left just a moment ago. It's still going on right now at Vancouver Avenue Baptist Church, and uh, and uh, what again an amazing turnout of people showing their respects for Geneva Knowles. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Brazard asked if we could just take just a moment um, to uh, uh, of just uh, of silence just in her honor. If we could just do maybe just 10, 15 seconds of just uh, quiet uh, solitude and remembrance of Geneva, because. Not only was she extremely talented and, and, and did so much for this community, uh, she when I had hair, she cut my hair too, Donnie. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and Paul Knowles is just an amazing, both of them, just an inseparable couple and did so much for this community. Matter of fact, the Trailblazers last night, I understand, gave up two of their big booths up there and okay. then dedicated the, the, the game uh, to, to, to Geneva Knowles. So we can take just five seconds, please, of silence in remembrance of Geneva Knowles. Thank you, Ken. For, Thank you for just giving that tribute. Uh, now, uh, Ken, t give us your point of view on this uh, upcoming show, your thirtieth that well, you have put together. Well, first of all, you're let me the say, master. It's, it's, not, it's not your; it's our. <laughs> because Ours. without Donnie Adair, we go all the way back, probably in high school, mm -hmm. and uh, being neighbors and friends, and you know the model that we use all the time, and you know Chappy Grice and mm -hmm. the whole team is that you know it's teamwork makes the dream work. That's right. And so these thirty years, I had the opportunity of being on KBOO Radio this morning mm -hmm. with Junior Johnson on his Gospel and More program. Mm -hmm. And as I, I was there, I was thinking about, well, you know, it's not really 30 years. It's 30 years with Portland Public but, Schools right. and our major sponsors, but it's actually 35 years right. because it started with KBOO Radio right. as a radio show. And yeah, I talked true. about that earlier yeah, yeah, in the, in the yeah. first segment of the program and kind of clued people in on on how you did get started. Yeah. Uh, and there, this is one of a number of celebrations in our community you right. want to talk about what well, some of those other some of those, some of those other celebrations we, there's remarkable things that are going on lake oswego for example is going to be doing a celebration of, of honoring dr martin luther king um that's going to be on friday the 16th seven o'clock and also the interfaith choir will be there helping to celebrate at lake in lake oswego the new thought center of spiritual living is where that is going to take place that is friday the mm -hmm. 16th then on uh friday the saturday uh, the, the 17th, there, there will be a special prayer breakfast or a breakfast celebration, which is going to be at Clark College. Mm -hmm. It'll be the fifth annual Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King breakfast celebration. And then on the 17th, there's also going to be another event at 12 o'clock, uh, Vancouver Avenue Baptist Church. It's called Salute 
to Greatness, a scholarship and awards luncheon, which is going to take place at Emmanuel Hospital. Mm -hmm. And Michael Chappie Grice is going to be the keynote speaker for that. That starts at 12 noon. Mm -hmm. Then our program on Monday, uh, the uh, 19th, 12 noon until 6 o'clock, will be broadcast live mm -hmm. right here on P uh, PCM. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be streamed as well, I understand. So anyone around the world will be able to to listen and watch the program live. Yeah. And hey, let, me, let me mention yes. something to you yeah. that's near and dear to my heart, yes. too. When you talk about having groups like the Portland Interfaith Choir yes. involved, yes. interfaith to me is something that the civil rights movement really brought to fruition. Exactly. And it, it took people from all faiths exactly. to get civil rights, not only for African Americans, but for all of us in this country. Uh, and so when you get an interfaith choir together, yes. it reminds me about the fact that when you hear songs like We Shall Overcome, exactly, exactly, uh, which was like the song of the civil rights movement, a lot of people thought uh, black people brought that. No, a white man from California mm -hmm. brought that song down south with him to that movement. Yes. And so, you know, and, here. And, and last night, I had the privilege of going to see Selma. Okay. And President uh, Lyndon B. Johnson also mentioned We Shall Overcome. Right. In right, his text right. when they're going through an excellent movie to see. But also I want to talk about the Interface Choir from the standpoint that that's directed by LaRonda Steele mm -hmm. and also our, our late Janice Marie Scroggins oh, right. was the pianist and also helped formulate that particular group. And uh, they're, they're going to be singing in the program mm -hmm. on Monday on uh, the 19th with us as well. Let me take a moment to bring in our... Our other Bring guest who, who's got here, thank you for coming, Mr. Michael Grice, How you who's doing? president of World Arts Foundation Incorporated and been part of this great team and, and team leadership that has helped us put together this 30th annual program and all the 29 that went before and is doing so much in the terms of preserving arts and the contributions of Af African Americans in our community and in the country. Michael, thank you for being here and welcome and and jump in wherever you want to fit in don't tell them that you know <laughs> well i'm happy that we're here i'm happy that uh, uh actually the leadership of ken berry for the uh, the production mm -hmm. he's our executive producer it's been his vision that we've collaborated we've been able to have world arts foundation aka serve uh, as the host for that for well 30 years plus uh one exciting dimension of the program this year is that uh, on that morning there will be a seminar uh, called the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act mm -hmm. seminar which fits right in Selma mm -hmm. and it will be at the Annex which is at 7908 Northeast Everett and that building the Annex to the Highland Christian Center um, is a very appropriate uh, location mm -hmm. uh, because uh, having been in Selma, Alabama and expecting to be there again on March the 8th and they have the reenactment of the march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge mm -hmm. um, uh, that building would fit right in Selma. Mm -hmm. It's the same vintage, it's the same kind of structure, and we're happy that we're going to be able to um, focus on the Voting Rights Act mm -hmm. and uh, the struggle uh, in civil rights, included uh, getting the right to vote. Right. So was, this uh, facility is just south of the main It's one church. block from, yeah, one it's block one block on from the Highland Center. South. Okay. And uh, it's going to feature the Honorable Lou Frederick, okay. uh, the Honorable Avell Gordley, okay. uh, uh, Olga Acuna, who is a uh, commissioner for Washington County okay. and is going to be moderated by uh, the esteemed Sharon Gary Smith. Okay. So I encourage people uh, not to miss uh, that prelude mm -hmm. to our 30th anniversary celebration. And there's a lot to learn a lot to about start. voting and about participating in a society, a free society, and what your responsibilities are. I'm hoping many young people, young adults, been the focus. will That's attend the focus. and find out about what's so important about Well, the there are two, Act. speaking of inter intergenerational communication, there are two populations that we really are focusing on. The uh, younger population, which will uh, come back and visit uh, the students, from, particularly from the uh, Portland Public Schools, Jefferson High School, Lincoln High School, Grand High School, Roosevelt High School, and their BSUs as catalysts mm -hmm. for the young black people. Black Student Union. The Black Student Union, as well as students from Hillsborough and Beaverton, Washington County, mm -hmm. who are going to come and participate that mm -hmm. in that. But also we're focusing on those people and inviting those people who actually lived through and even participated in as freedom writers. We have several here in Portland. 
okay. uh, who have participated in the civil rights movement actively mm -hmm. and who have lived through the voting rights era. There was a time when we didn't have the right to vote and to uh, see that actually take place and be codified in our constitution uh, mm -hmm. is certainly uh, worth, uh, worth the time that people will spend and seeing those two facets of our generations come together. The young people who are learning about it and mm -hmm. the elders who live through it will uh, make it a very uh, delightful and uh, educational event. Well, well it's interesting when you, when you talk about, say for instance, the impact of participating in the civil rights movement and so forth, people like Lou Frederick's parents right. marched. And yes. he's like the fruit of exactly right yes. the movement, you know, if you know what I mean. So uh, I had the pleasure of meeting his mother several years ago when he first uh, went to the legislature. And, and they had the ceremony to uh, induct him into mm -hmm. the legislature. So. I remember visiting the uh, Civil Rights Museum. Uh, it's actually the Human Rights and Civil Rights Museum in Greensboro, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And so we have forgotten some of the uh, phrases that were used. Uh, you know, we had to fight for accommodations in hotels, mm -hmm. uh, being able to sit at a lunch counter, mm -hmm. as well as to secure the right to vote and be participate fully mm -hmm. as citizens in the United States. And uh, at that time, when they were trying to uh, integrate the lunch counters, and that lunch counter at Woolworths is preserved as part of the museum is built around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, their phrase was, jail, no bail. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they allowed themselves to be arrested until the jail was full mm -hmm. and there was no place else to put the people, because they took people out mm -hmm. and arrested them. More came in and sat at the lunch counter mm -hmm. until the jail was full. And that strategy of jail, mm -hmm. no bail, they said, we're not going to be bailed out. We're just going to fill your jails, uh, actually broke the back of that, of, mm -hmm. and, of that segregation and was a big part of the civil rights movement. So it's important for our, our elders to be reminded and our young people right. to be introduced to the fact that we have not won these rights without a struggle. Right. And as you and I have uh, promulgated in the past, you need to be aware that people weren't marching down south just for rights there, that in Portland, Oregon, there was white trade only signs in right. downtown course, Portland. Or you couldn't eat at the lunch counter at Lippmann's in downtown Portland, you know? Here, and here's the, an interesting the, fact about uh, how that was broken down. Um, there's a component of this year's 30th anniversary that's going to be dedicated to William Woods. Mm -hmm. And he is the, the ambassador for all of the men, particularly the railroad men and the, and the shipyard uh, workers, who uh, could not protest in the way that they uh, would like to have uh, because they would have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. And so we can look at the elders, the Minnie Bell Johnsons and the other elders in the community, the women mm -hmm. who did protest mm -hmm. and who did uh, move the needle to make things uh, better uh, for all of us. Mm -hmm. But it was the women in Portland, the African-American women in Portland mm -hmm. and their colleagues uh, who uh, broke the back of that kind of segregation here in Portland mm -hmm. or that kind of discrimination here. In well, I, having this great program in celebration of Dr. King is, is a wonderful way to get people's interest and get information about these kinds of things to them because we have such a range of speakers and I talked earlier about Aaron Gandhi coming uh, being a peace activist for decades and of course what his grandfather uh, Mahatma Gandhi brought in terms of making people aware of what civil de disobedience could do in, in, in uh, helping to overthrow the colonization of England in India and that kind of stuff. Just a monumental right. achievement. But that's where Dr. King took his model of civil disobedience mm -hmm. from. And so right. having a grandson from Gandhi here to, uh, who's continuing to right. do work for peace right. uh, is just going to be a wonderful He's thing. He's going to be our keynote speaker for the program. Yeah. And also there's going to be a week's worth of activities that you, one can actually attend as well. We're going to post that on our mm -hmm. website, which is World Arts Foundation uh, Inc. or WorldArtsPDX.com. Uh, that will be posted there. There'll be a full week's worth of activities. The next day after the uh, program on the 20th, mm -hmm. um, uh, there will be a, a special reception where he's going to speak at the Oregon Historical Society. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a there's a, a, an array of, of activities every day mm -hmm. for the whole week following the King program. Yeah, it's quite a blessing this year uh, in that it would occur at our 30th anniversary program that uh, springing off of the scanner breakfast that we will be in position to mm -hmm. operate a, a three-pronged 
uh, effort. One with the Voting Rights Act mm -hmm. uh, seminar, one with our, our traditional six-hour program mm -hmm. that's simulcast on cable radio and broadcast on our local cable channels, and then the Arun Gandhi uh, sequence of events that enhances our program and then follows it. It will settle down by the end of that week. Um, we'll be exhausted, but we'll be right. better educated and better equipped to help the community along the lines of a, of a peaceful uh, assembly. And I think it's, it's worth noting, and we take it for granted sometime, that all of these achievements have been accomplished nonviolence. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Without a blow thrown, yeah. uh, just enduring and uh, staying on the path of right. Uh, has led to uh, everyone, uh, gays and lesbians, elders and, uh, mm -hmm. and immigrants, have all benefited from mm -hmm. uh, the civil rights movement. Right. I want to also mention the Vancouver Avenue Baptist Church annual King celebration as well, uh, which That's will be Sunday the 15th. Exactly, 3 o'clock. And, and at 3 p.m., you will really want to uh, take note of that. Elder uh, Bernice A. King, daughter of... The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. will be in attendance and be sp That will speaking. be on the 15th of February. There's yeah. a follow-up. So oh, pardon 15th, 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 yeah. 15th of February. 15th of February. 15th of February. So we're letting you know about these related events because this is a total community effort, gentlemen. Wouldn't you yes, agree? Exactly. To, to keep that dream alive, to keep the values that we hold so dear alive and active in people's minds because... You know, I think as time goes on, we get mm. complacent. Very, very. You know, we start thinking about, you know, what are the Seahawks doing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and how the Blazers are doing, and, and a lot of things come into our lives and become uh, very important to us that maybe are not quite as important as, mm -hmm. you know, who's running for office, what values do they have, what are they voting for, you know, we don't want to talk about uh, street fee and tax <laughs> and things like that. So sometimes the programs like this will mm -hmm. get us back on our <clears throat> political feet, so to speak. They're exactly. intended to remind right, people right. about the, yeah, our get responsibility. Us active, you know. August Wilson put it so poignantly. He said, isn't it interesting that our stadiums are full and our libraries are empty? Yeah. So well, we as school teachers and that great league of people who invest every day in kids, whether it's in public or private, whether it's with the elders or with the young people, uh, we have an opportunity as well as a responsibility to bring it around uh, mm -hmm. so that, uh, that the achievements that people have made can be preserved and can be expanded and continued. Mm -hmm. Ken, I've talked a little bit about the program being in kind of three segments and uh, talked a little bit about that first segment where we're going to have some sure. of those wonderful youth bands, uh, Rosa Parks band, right. the Martin Luther King right. jazz band, uh, Martin Luther King School. You know, yes, school jazz band is being led by you know a Grammy Award winner, and then the distinguished Kenny Paulson are, have got those kids at a high skill level as as young musicians. And uh, uh, talk about maybe the middle segment of the program and and well, what. Linda Hornbuckle mean, right, meant right. to us. And Let me go back to the very, very beginning of, of this year because, you know, we never know how the program is going to work out. Right. You know, we over the years, we've had actually a seven and a half pro hour program. Mm -hmm. But thanks to our president, Michael Chappie Grice, he said, cut it down, stream it down, make it six hours. So we've done it this year. And but everything is time to the T. But putting the program together again, sitting down with Arietta. Ward, mm -hmm. who is Janice Scroggins' daughter. Uh, we're trying to pass this thing on to our younger people now. Right. Well, she's and been she, a co-producer with she, you She's for been a co-producer and now. helped put together the vision of basically breaking the program down to three parts. Whereas we're going to do a tribute to Linda Hornbuckle, will be the first tribute. The second tribute will be to her mother, Janice Marie Scroggins. Mm -hmm. And as we close, we'll bring a tribute to my Uncle Harold, William Harold Wood, mm -hmm. who passed away October 30th at 93 years old. And in between that, we're going to have the different school performances, the different speakers, the different dignitaries coming together and reminding us about the importance of why we should keep the dream alive. Just to name uh, just a few of the schools, for example, that will be 
taking place. We will have uh, schools from uh, Lane Elementary School. Of course, Martin Luther King Jr. School will be there. We have um, Buckman. We have Woodlawn. We have uh, Sabin. We have Irvington, just to name a few of the school kids mm -hmm. that will actually be participating. As far as choirs are concerned, the Highland Youth Choir, Derek McDuffie and Kingdom Sound, Lift Every Voice Choir will be there, the Gospel Music Workshop of America, and of course, we mentioned just a moment ago, the Portland Enter faith choir. We also are doing what we call video inserts, thanks to A.J. Wan. Mm -hmm. Even though he's in Los Angeles, California, he's still doing some video inserts for us, and mm -hmm. we're going to be introducing those in the context of the program, giving a historical perspective. And we also will have dramatic presentations, thanks to Val Peterson. The pieces that we'll be doing, she'll be doing, that she's written and will be directing, is called the Emmett Till of Tallahatchie Weekend, and also the Rosa Parks and Coretta Scott King, The Gentle Rocks of Unspoken Truths. So just to give you a little sample, of course, the legendary Beyonds will be there, Cocotona African Dance Troupe, the Kemba uh, Shanna Dance Ensemble, the Lifetime Achievement Awards, mm -hmm. thanks to Barbara uh, Walker, who's been uh, the person that's kind of spearheaded that for us over the years. We're going to be honoring Mr. Edward Peterson III, Tom Darby, um, Leslie Unthink, and Dr. Harriet Adair for their services. How many well, acts do you have, Ken? Well, I really don't want to tell you because, director, you may tell me it's cut. Seven okay. Is, 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 <laughs> no, it's a, it's a no, no. Okay, well, let's, let's, put, let's put it this way and put it together. We have um, uh, quite a few acts, but and, and and if you're concerned about time or you're concerned about actually not time, but the actual acts that are going to take place, we invite folks to go to our website mm -hmm. and that we have a block schedule there talking about all the acts from 12 to 2 o'clock, yeah. 2 to 4 o'clock, and also 4 to 6. Mm -hmm. And we have probably close to 60 acts yeah, when, we, when, when we when we look at the, the speakers and we look at the actual groups. But everything is timed. Our formula mm -hmm. has been uh, requesting speakers no more than three minutes and our acts no more than seven to eight minutes for yeah, their presentation. That, is, that enables a lot of voices mm -hmm. to, to land on the same point, and that is our participation, our appreciation for uh, Martin Luther King Jr., uh, the dream, and our, our job to mm -hmm. wake up and uh, live out the dream. And so what I would like to do is be sure and extend the invitation to people there we go. to come. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I was gonna come to that about KBOO, uh, not only to come to the event and experience it firsthand, because it is local, it is easily accessible, it's on the bus line, uh, there's no reason not to come, it's affordable, but, uh, but also for people to call their friends in different parts of the United States. Mm -hmm. Because if they dial in on their computer, www.kboo.fm, they can hear the broadcast live. Mm -hmm. And we have friends in New York and Atlanta and Dallas and Los Angeles, Denver and Chicago who are picking it up. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to expand that. So if you have cousins and you have friends and family in other cities, they can tune into this well. And we ask you, we deputize you to be our ambassador and make this a uh, You, you can do the audio part. And also we're going to be video streaming right. on Portland Community Media and also on Portland Public Schools Television Services. That portion of the program will be tape delayed by four hours. Mm -hmm. So people who can't maybe make it because of work si situations, they'll be able to still tune in and, and experience the program. Also, we should talk about the Victory Village, thanks to yes. John Lampkin mm -hmm. and thanks to Sunshine Dixon for their, their, their wonderful work. We have more than 40 um, vendors who are going to be displaying their 50, wares. I, well, I didn't want to say that, but yeah, <laughs> we're, we're up there. And, but, but the purpose of that is to allow families to come and absorb the, the information and network and communicate and build relationships. One of the things that Paul Knowles used to say to me many years ago was that, hey, Ken, you guys don't ever stop this because this is like a family reunion. Mm -hmm. People come together who never see each other during the year yeah. but come to this mm -hmm. particular event. Mm -hmm. So it's a family affair. Let me, let me stop right there just to remind our, our uh, viewers that this is Oregon uh, Voters Digest, the show that brings issues of interest to community television and today we're talking about the 30th annual keep alive the dream celebration of the reverend dr martin luther king jr sponsored by the world arts foundation it'll be january 19th uh six uh, pardon me noon to 6 p.m at highland christian center northeast 76 and gleason street so we encourage you to come out and get it live but you'll also be able to get it via this station and via the portland public schools channel 
and then also on KBOO Radio, locally on FM and on the Internet. So be sure to join us for that. My guest, Ken Berry, Executive Director of the program these many years, and Mr. Michael Chappie Grice, President of World Arts Foundation uh, Incorporated. Michael, quickly uh, t- talk about some of the other initiatives of the World Arts Foundation for this year. Well, as World Arts Foundation Incorporated, we have been uh, uh, featured in a number of articles uh, about the work. And I just want to uh, come back and point to a very small point that um, uh, I know that Ken Berry gets his share of uh, accolades and whatnot. But when people stop and think about what it takes uh, to produce a show that runs nonstop for six hours, and we've been in the planning for six months, mm-hmm. but now here's the, uh, the, the, the challenge. Uh, once it goes live, there's, we, there's no retakes. There's no chance to warm up and, uh, and do that over again like you have with television production. And yet we're laid right alongside other television production. People, they're accustomed to seeing first-rate television and color. And, and so we're not competing so much with that. But to match uh, what people are common, uh, commonly experiencing uh, is something that uh, is no a small endeavor. And, of course, there's an entire team, a production team of 60-plus of people who are helping achieve that, but that just speaks again to the leadership, the vision, and the ex- expertise that's required in order to uh, coordinate all those moving parts so that people who either who sit home, and particularly I'm encouraging people to come uh, to the event and experience it firsthand, it's, it's, and particularly this year, uh, it's something like they've never experienced before, and pe- that's why people come back you know, time and time again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we continue to work with the schools. Uh, I just was meeting uh, with Bernie Foster mm-hmm. and the National Black Newspaper Association, mm-hmm. and one of the projects that we have is called Writing for Democracy, mm-hmm. and that is a, an intervention that we can plug into school starting at third grade mm-hmm. where kids use the newspaper, mm-hmm. and particularly the, uh, the national network black newspapers as well as the local newspapers, uh, to study the editorial section. Mm-hmm. Because in the editorial section is the preservation of democracy. Why? Because you have both the side A and side B. Mm-hmm. You're going to have somebody advocate, you have to do the pro and con. And as students learn to actually copy those short uh, letters to editor and argue the, both sides of the equation, they're going to improve their writing skills and their thinking skills and become an, you know, appreciate for um, a fast, uh, rapidly disappearing uh, mm-hmm. artifact in our culture, and that is the local newspapers. Mm-hmm. A lot of newspapers are now online, E-paper, and yeah, eventually yeah. everything is going to be online. So we want them to feel the paper and to really elevate their level of literacy mm-hmm. by studying democracy. Okay. Other Spe- other initiatives of World Arts Foundation Incorporated well, that we, you're either in the planning stage or uh, going to be doing in 2015? Well, mostly what we're doing now is partnering with other organizations. Okay. The Portland African American Leadership Forum, uh, the Urban Forestry Group. Next summer we're working with uh, the Portland Development Commission uh, to have summer jobs for young people right. that integrate with what we're doing uh, in the educational mm-hmm. arena. Our motto, uh, and we take it pretty seriously, uh, working hard at the intersection of education and the arts. Mm -hmm. Working hard at the intersection of education and the arts. We want these things to come together. This is where our area of specialty is, arts and education. And we used to think it was a, we liked that because it wasn't so political. Mm -hmm. Only to find that there's nothing more political than the arts Arts and education. education. (laughs) It didn't backfire on us, but we got a lesson. (laughs) We got an education in the process. Ken, your thoughts as we get toward the end of the hour here? Well, I just want to say, I just want to say, the program is the teamwork makes the dream work is our motto, and we re- remind everyone that that it takes everyone to make the program work. And we're so fortunate over the years. Michael says about sixty people that we work with. I counted all the people we work with. It's probably almost two hundred and seventy people that make the whole program work the day of the program because there has to be communication yeah. not only communication by, by phone but also written communication and emails and all those things and walkie so we're, talkie every, everything the walkie yeah. talkies and again we thank everyone just for, for their for their for their work and support again our goal is to try to pass it on though and I might see if you can pass it on talking about our MCs you want mm-hmm. to talk about our, our new MCs I did we, we, we already did the early Wonderful. portion all right. of the program so they're, yes. they're, they're coming expecting to see Miracle Trice and uh, we and your son on has done a tremendous yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's, he's and a vet. You got, got a grandson coming up behind you now. That's right. We've been bringing my three year old uh, grandson to the production meetings. <laughs> That's it. Uh, just like, you know, we were behind mama right, and grandmama right. uh, at church meetings and stuff when exactly. we grew up. Uh, yeah. 
So we're bringing the kids up like that. And speaking too. of growing up, you know, we we always like to share the story about the fact that Donnie's grandfather was my Sunday school teacher, and many times we, well, Donnie's gone to church, and people have asked him to play the piano. Ken Berry, would you mind playing the piano? Because they get us all confused sometimes, you know. <laughs> we're, but, we're together too much, man. Yeah. They really have. But I, the other thing we do want to acknowledge, though, Ken had his first grandbaby, a, a granddaughter, Isabel, uh, Isabella. And Juliet. He doesn't even Juliet. know what he's going to yes. go through, but congratulations. Well, let me, congratulations, ta- let me tell you this. Ken. I'm getting a feel for it because I'm up at 5 o'clock every morning <laughs> babysitting. <laughs> so uh, what can thing, I say? Yeah. I want to invite people or uh, remind them about the uh, the Voting Rights Act seminar. Okay. It's going to be exquisite. Do. It's going to be at the Annex, which is 7908 uh, Northeast Everett, just one block south of the Highland uh, Center, uh, and featuring Lou Frederick, uh, the Honorable Lou Frederick, the Honorable Avial Gordley, and Olga uh, Kuna from the, the commission uh, in Washington County, uh, moderated by Sharon Gary Smith. That's at 1030, okay. uh, just prior to the start of the program. 1030 so, to 10, 1130, we'll give you time to move up the block and come to keep alive the dream and, and keep it going. That's it. Yes. Well, again, we want to thank Bruce Bazard. Yes, Bruce. And again, get well, Bruce. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to co-host uh, he does such a wonderful job with the show time. and bringing issues that the community, uh, community needs to hear and wants to hear about. So uh, one last time, let me remind people, you're invited to keep alive the dream. The 30th annual tribute to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. sponsored by World Arts Foundation Incorporated. It'll be held on that date, January 19th from noon until 6 p.m. So join us live on KBOO Radio, both uh, locally on FM or on the Internet. I'm Donnie Adair, and uh, it's been a pleasure to sub for Bruce today and to talk to these wonderful gentlemen to my right, Ken Berry, Executive Director of Keep Alive the Dream, and uh, Michael Grice, President of World House Foundation Thank Incorporated. Thank you, Donnie. A day on, not a day off. Right. Thank you, gentlemen, Thank for being you. here. All right.